Welcome back. Now that we've gone through the functional programming concept, I hope you understand the idea of going from procedural to functional programming. At the end of the day, a function without a return statement, that's just a procedure, right? Functional programming gave us this idea of pure function. And functions are useful because, well, we limit repetitions. Every time we use a function, it's something that is reusable. We can reuse that function somewhere else. Now, one thing that you may have realized is that although functional programming has different concepts than object-oriented programming, at the end of the day, the goal is still the same, to have these things in mind to write better code. Functional programming, just like object-oriented programming, is all about making your code predictable. Now, the one benefit of functional programming that you may have noticed is that it's really, really good at doing one-to-one -one data transformations. That is, we have a piece of data and we have functions acting upon it. And in the next section, we're gonna compare object-oriented programming with functional programming to really have a better general understanding of when to use what. But to review what we've learned up until now, we'll notice that functional programming is quite powerful. And once you start doing a lot of functional programming, you're gonna start to see a trend towards this idea of lists and elements of a list. And this idea of lists being transformed based on these little functions. And these lists, well, we used arrays as an example, but it can be any data structure. It can be objects, it could be trees, it could be anything that you want. We're just acting upon data. The thinking though with functional program is that it lays the foundation for creating these, this reusable code that we can move pieces of functions around to do different things based on our needs. And the reason that we were able to do all of this was because JavaScript makes it easy to assign functions to variables, pass them into other functions, return functions from functions, compose functions, pipe functions, JavaScript also allows us to use immutable concepts like primitive types or using map or concat on arrays, object.assign, cloning objects using spread operators. And we learned a lot of difficult functional programming terms. But at the end of the day, all the terms mean is that we're building pure functions and we're trying to have as many pure functions as possible to try and avoid mutating state as much as we can in order to have this clean, predictable code. And by the way, using what you've learned now, you might look at library code differently. For example, in our RoboFriends Redux app, which is an app that we built in one of my other courses, if we go to containers and app.js and scroll all the way down, this is an app built with React and Redux. And we see over here that this connect well, it reminds us a lot of Compose, doesn't it? We take the app, which is our entire front-end application or the view of the front-end application, and we add different things to it. So we take this data, this view, and we add properties, and we add map state to props, which is sort of like actions. So if we scroll all the way down up, even if you don't know anything about React, we see that map state to props and map dispatch to props are taking some sort of state or actions and returning, once again, objects that we can attach to our app. Things like Redux really popularized the idea of functional programming for JavaScript developers, especially front-end JavaScript developers. You start to see now that reducers and Redux, well, they're doing the same thing. They have state that they receive, and some actions, and based on those actions, we return a new state. You see, these paradigms that were developed over decades are now being used by some of the most popular libraries for JavaScript and other programming languages. And I hope with this section, you start to notice these little things, that it's not actually just extremely clever people that you'll never be able to understand or you'll never be able to be as good as they are. All these programmers are just using the skills 
the paradigms that people in the past have learned and have adapted. So I hope now you have a better way to look at code and understand it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.